Hello, my dear friends. Today I'm talking about triplicities. Hellenistic astrologers categorize charts according to their sect. A diurnal or day chart has the sun above the horizon, the ascendant descendant axis, and the nocturnal or night chart has the sun below the horizon. The planets are divided up into two groups, teams or parties, by sect. The diurnal planets are Sun, Jupiter and Saturn. The nocturnal planets are Moon, Venus and Mars. Mercury is ambivalent and is considered diurnal when it rises before the Sun and nocturnal when it rises after the Sun. Planets act in a more balanced, positive and effective way when in a chart that agrees with their sect. Planets in a chart that differs from their sect are either less positive or more harmful. They are less at home or at ease and are more likely to act in an unbalanced or unfavorable manner. Benefics are more benefic when in a sect and malefics are more malefic when are out of sect. Classical philosophy tells us that number three, the triad, is a second number symbolizing harmony, balance, completion and fulfillment. Three is the number of the triangle and in mystical geometry and numerology both shape a number are used to represent the natural cycle of life. 1. The descent of the soul into the body at birth. 2. Life. And 3. The return of the soul to its parent at death. Hence, number 3 is the number of completion. The wall, the beginning, middle and the end of all things. All world religions are underpinned by this ancient belief. The Christian faith speaks of the Holy Trinity being the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Holy Trinities are not peculiar to Christianity. They are part of a very widespread and ancient tradition that recognize the power of number three. The Babylonians, for example, were particularly fond of classing the gods into triads, that of Anu, Enlil, and Ea being their most notable. In astrology, the beneficial associations of number three are evident in the interpretation of the trine aspect as a relationship that denotes har harmony and fulfillment. They are also evident in the use of triplicities, the connection of signs that share a common agreement, and in the determination of planetary dignity through the use of triplicity rules. In the first century, the astrologer Manilius wrote in his Astronomica that triangles inscribed within the cycle of the zodiac group that group the signs into four sets of triplicities. Triplicities were identified because of the harmonious relationship inherent in the shape created by their relationship to each other. The association between triplicities and elements arose from this but was not explicitly started by early astrologers such as Ptolemy and his contemporaries. In Hellenistic astrology, the recognition of the triplicity lay in the fact that it facilitates agreement between the signs that are associated through the shape and symbolism of the triangle. Any planets that are placed within those signs are able to create a harmonious blend of energies. Each group of triplicities has its own set of planetary rules. Lily used to mention two for each triplicity, a day ruler and a night ruler. But originally there were three rulers for each sect. The list of triplicities rulers 
given by Dariot on the 17th centuries is a more faithful reproduction of the earlier scheme used by Valens, Vetius and Dorotheus in the classical periods. In this system, each triplicity has two rulers, which exchange priority according to whatever the chart is diurnal or nocturnal, plus a third ruler which is common to both sects. And you can see here the classical scheme of triplicity rulers. The selection of triplicity rulers is dependent upon the correct alignment between planetary nature and sect. In other words, a diurnal triplicity could not be governed by a nocturnal planet and vice versa. The argument is that nocturnal planets have a very different quality to the ordinal ones, and the beneficial influences are increased when planets are located in a suitable, compatible environment. One point that confuses many people about planetary sects is that Mars, notably hot and dry planet, is aligned to the nocturnal sect, who is cold and moist. If this seems confusing, and it is, Remember that it was done to moderate the natural excess of Mars and not to strengthen it. Mars is damaging through its excesses of heat and is better to able to produce a beneficial influence when its natural qualities are harnessed. The same works for Saturn, which is assigned to the warmth of the diurnal sect in order to moderate its naturally excessive coldness. Early astrologers used all three planets, rotating their priority by day and night. But many later ones, including Lily, chose to use only the principal rulers. Perhaps they rejected the convoluted logic that lay behind the definition of sect. You see here above a vlog about what it means sect in astrology. Or perhaps they were confused by Ptolemy, who appears to mention only two rulers for the Aries and Capricorn triplicities. In his Carmen Astrologicum, Dorotheus showed how the triplicities can be used to interpret almost any aspect of life. For example, in a diurnal nativity, the sun and its three triplicity rulers indicate the condition of the father, while the moon's triplicity rulers will tell you about the life of the mother. If you want to know about a man's generally relationship condition with a woman, look to the triplicity of Venus. If the first of the lords of Venus triplicity is in a good place and the second in a bad place, then this condition is the matter of woman is good in the beginning of his age. And in the last, it is bad because the first of the lords of Venus triplicity indicates the first years, the second indicates the middle years, and the third indicates the end of life. In another future vlog, I will give you practical examples uh, for each essential dignities. Until then, I wish you all the best. Bye bye.